Welcome to Before the Council, a reading of the Revere City Council agenda for the meeting of Monday, May 19th, 2014. There are 22 items on the agenda this week. Coverage begins at 5.15 p.m. with the Zoning Committee meeting, chaired by Councilor Stephen Reardon. On the committee are Councilors Arthur F. Guinasso, Councilor Ira Novoselsky, Councilor Charles J. Patch, Sr., and Councilor Richard A. Penta. The committee will consider the following application, pursuant to Council Order C-14-04, New Singular Wireless PCS LLC, doing business as AT&T for a permit to modify an existing wireless facility by adding three panel antennae and additional network upgrade at the premises located at number 427 Squire Road, in Revere, Massachusetts. At 545, we move on to the Appointments Committee, chaired by Councilor Arthur F. Guinasso, along with Councilors Jessica A. Giannino, Councilor Stephen Morabito, Councilor Charles J. Patch Sr., and Councilor Stephen Reardon. There are several items on their agenda. They will consider the following appointments. First, the reappointment of Mr. Thomas Abadi of Revere, Massachusetts as an assistant harbor master for a three-year term. Two, reappointment of GeoSearch Incorporated of Fitchburg, Massachusetts as a licensed drain layer. Three, pursuant to Council Order 14-094, the reappointment of Menino Construction Company Incorporated of Lynn, Massachusetts as a licensed drain layer. Four, Pursuant to Council Order 14-095, reappointment of J.J. O'Brien and Sons, Incorporated of Waltham, Massachusetts, as a licensed drain layer. Five, pursuant to Council Order 14-113, this is the appointment of Sean Farrell Excavating, Incorporated of Quincy, Massachusetts, as a licensed drain layer. Six, pursuant to Council Order 14-114, the reappointment of CRL Incorporated of Medford, Massachusetts as a licensed drain layer. Seven, pursuant to Council Order 14-118, the appointment of Richard Petty of Medford, Massachusetts to the Revere Resident Employment Committee. Eight, pursuant to Council Order 14-120, the appointment of Heimlich Landscaping and Construction of Woburn, Massachusetts as a licensed drain layer. And nine, pursuant to Council Order 14-121, the appointment of JNA Contracting Services Incorporated of Chelsea, Massachusetts, as a licensed drain layer. Please remember that in order for an appointment to be confirmed by the full city council, the appointee must attend the appointments subcommittee meeting. At 6 p.m., we move on to the city council meeting, which begins with a salute to the flag, the roll call of members, and the approval of the journal of the meetings of April 28, 2014, and May 5, 2014. Then it's on to calendar item number one. Pursuant to Council Order 14-101, Police Chief Joseph Caffarelli will present awards to select police officers who have served above and beyond the call of duty, including certificates of commendation to be awarded to the officers involved with Operation High Tide, leading to the arrest of 26 drug dealers. Calendar item number two, pursuant to Council Order C-14-05, hearing has been called as ordered upon the application of For Kids Only After School Incorporated, seeking permission to raise and reconstruct a non-conforming structure for the operation of an after-school program in the GB District at number 85 Broadway in Revere. Calendar item number three, hearing has been called as ordered upon the petition presented by National Grid for poll locations on Hillside Avenue and Revere Beach Parkway. National Grid wishes to install one SO pole beginning on a point approximately 150 feet east of the center line of the intersection of Hillside Avenue. National Grid to install one pole, 31-1, on the side of the road of Revere Beach Parkway. Calendar item number four. 
Hearing has been called as ordered upon the petition presented by National Grid for conduit locations on Park Avenue. The following are the streets and highways referred to, plan number 15996163 Park Avenue. National Grid to install customer service conduit at pole number 2545, pole number 2543, and pole number 2542 to provide service to the school stadium renovation. Calendar item number five. Pursuant to Council Order C-14-02, this is a revocation hearing called as ordered relative to the special permit previously granted for the premises located at number 765 Revere Beach Parkway. In a letter dated May 5, 2014 from the city clerk to Revere Adult Daycare Health Center in care of Ms. Victoria Vinoker, Dear Ms. Vinoker, in accordance with the provisions of Section 5.04.090 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Revere, this letter shall serve as notification of the intent of the Revere City Council to revoke Special Permit Number C-14-02 granted on March 24, 2014, subject to conditions set forth by the Revere City Council for the premises located at Number 765, Revere Beach Parkway, Revere, Massachusetts. The applicant has failed to comply with the following conditions of the special permit. One, the parking lot must be striped to provide for 22 parking spaces. There shall be no parking of vans or employee vehicles along Mill Street or Taft Street. Two, the plans must be stamped and approved by the fire department prior to the issuance of a building permit. Three, a designated no-parking fire lane must be maintained along the front of the building for accessibility at all times by the fire department and ambulance. For all owners, employees, delivery drivers, patients, and any other person shall only use Revere Beach Parkway as an entry and exit way to the property. At no time shall Mill Street be used to gain entry or exit to the property. Therefore, the Revere City Council will conduct a public hearing on Monday evening, May 19, 2014, at 6 p.m. in the City Council of Joseph A. Del Grasso City Council Chamber of Revere City Hall, 281 Broadway, Revere, Massachusetts, 02151, to show cause for revocation of the special permit. Very truly yours, Ashley E. Melnick, City Clerk, on behalf of the Revere City Council. Calendar item number six is the Zoning Committee report. Calendar item number seven is the Appointments Committee report. Calendar item number eight. This is a communication from the Chief of Police relative to the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. That's the JAG program. Dated May 6, 2014. To the City Clerk, dear Ms. Melnick, this is a request by the Revere Police Department to include on the City Council agenda for the May 19, 2014 meeting notification that the City of Revere Police Department will be applying by June 10, 2014 for the fiscal year 2014 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant, that is JAG program, local solicitation in the amount of $22,843. This funding will be used to maintain a part-time community resource coordinator position and to purchase educational materials for the purpose of community outreach. The application for this grant will be available for review at the Office of the Chief of Police, 400 Revere Beach Parkway, Revere, Massachusetts. If you have any questions, please contact me. And it's signed, Sincerely, Joseph A. Caffarelli, Revere Chief of Police. Calendar item number nine. This is a communication from the Department of Veterans Services relative to the installation of a memorial pole for Mr. Joseph D'Ambrosio, Army Technical Sergeant 3rd Class, on Douglas Street at the corner of Temple Street. Dated May 8, 2014, dear Honorable Counsel. I have received a request from the family of Joseph D'Ambrosio to have a memorial square designated in his honor. They wish the Memorial Square pole to be installed on the corner of Douglas Street and Temple Street. The family would appreciate if this memorial could be installed prior to Memorial Day. Mr. D'Ambrosio lived at 75 Douglas Street prior to entering the Army on June 8, 1943, and attained the rank of Technical Sergeant 3rd Class. While in the Pacific, 
He served for 22 months installing, inspecting, repairing, and maintaining all types of electric motors. Some of the decorations he received, the Asiatic Pacific Theater Campaign Ribbon, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Theater Campaign Ribbon, the World War II Victory Medal. It would be fitting to have a memorial square in honor of Tech Sergeant Joseph D'Ambrosio. A copy of his DD-214 is on file in this office. Thank you for your immediate attention. Sincerely, Nicholas Bua, Director of Revere Veterans Services. Calendar item number 10. This is a communication from the mayor relative to Harbor Master reappointments and the reappointment of Mr. Eugene McKenna to the planning board, dated May 7, 2014. Dear City Council members, I am writing to request that the City Council consider the following appointments and reappointments to various boards, commissions, and positions. One, for reappointment as a Harbor Master for a new three year term expiring. In January of 2017, Mr. Christopher Clark of Revere, Massachusetts. Two, for reappointment as a harbor master for a new three-year term expiring in January of 2017, Mr. John Hurley of Revere, Massachusetts. And three, for reappointment to the planning board for a new five-year term expiring in January of 2019, Mr. Eugene McKenna of Revere, Massachusetts. And it's signed by Mayor Daniel Rizzo. Calendar item number 11. This is a communication from the mayor relative to the Wheeler Brader Sagas Incorporated trash disposal contract dated May 5th. Dear Councilors, I am writing to request the City Council vote to authorize the waste disposal contract between the City of Revere and Wheeler Brader Sagas Incorporated, formerly Resco. As you probably know, Wheeler Brader accepts at its Sagas plant all the trash collected in Revere. However, our current contract with Wheeler Brader will expire on December 31st, 2014. Therefore, I would like to enter into a new contract beginning January 1st, 2015, continuing through June 30th, 2024, nine and a half years, with an option to extend for an additional five years. As required by Massachusetts law, all contracts in excess of three years must be approved by the City Council. Currently, the city is paying Wheeler Brader a base tipping fee of seventy-seven fifty per ton to process the city's trash. The new contract reduces the fee to sixty-four dollars per ton in fiscal year twenty fifteen, gradually increasing to sixty-five ninety-two in fiscal year twenty sixteen, sixty-seven ninety in fiscal year twenty seventeen. in fiscal year 2018, 72.03 in fiscal year 2019, 74.19 in fiscal year 2020, 76.42 in fiscal year 2021, 6.5 years at rates lower than the current rate of 77.50, 78.71 in fiscal year 2022, 81.07 81.07 in fiscal year 2023 and 83.51 in fiscal year 2024, the last year of the contract. We don't incur an actual per ton increase until fiscal year 2022 and at the highest rate of 83.51, 10 years from now, it's a mere $6.01 increase over the current rate. Also, leaf and yard waste remains at $17 per ton for the life of the agreement. We're currently paying $16. In addition, Wheeler Brader is offering a cash incentive of $152,000 for securing our commitment prior to the expiration of the current contract. It makes perfect sense for the city to continue doing business with Wheeler Brader, We have had a good working relationship with them for years, and their close proximity helps keep down our collection costs. I think this is a fiscally sound proposal and a great value for the city. Therefore, I ask that the City Council vote to authorize execution of the contract. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Calendar item number 12. This is a communication from the mayor proclaiming May 17th, 2014 as National Kids to Parks Day. Dated April 30th, 
2014. Dear council members, I have attached a proclamation declaring Saturday, May 17th, 2014, National Kids to Parks Day. Sincerely yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. A proclamation, whereas May 17th, 2014 is the fourth National Kids to Parks Day organized and launched by the National Parks Trust, and whereas National Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages families to get outdoors and visit America's parks, and whereas it is important to introduce a new generation to our nation's parks because of the decline in park attendance over the last decades, and whereas we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat the issues of childhood obesity, diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, and hypercholesterol disease, and whereas National Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants, and whereas National Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and the outdoors. And now, therefore, I, Mayor Daniel Rizzo, Mayor of the City of Revere, do hereby proclaim and participate in National Kids to Parks Day. I urge residents of Revere to make May 17, 2014, to take time to take the children in their lives to a neighborhood, state, or national park, dated this 30th day of April 2014, signed by Ashley E. Melnick, City Clerk, and Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Calendar item number 13. This is a communication from the Mayor relative to a resolution in support of 32 BJ Service Employees Union District 615 for the MBTA janitors, dated May 13th, dear City Council. Attached here to please find a copy of a resolution regarding the MBTA cuts to janitors and the city's support on behalf of the 32 BJ Service Employees International Union District 615. I would like to address this resolution along with members of the union at the city council meeting on Monday, May 19th, 2014 at 6 p.m. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Whereas Revere recognizes that the contracted janitors who clean MBTA stations work hard to maintain a clean and safe environment for T-riders, and whereas Revere recognizes that in an environment in which workers are routinely called upon to clean not only soil and trash but urine, vomit, and feces, dirty MBTA stations create a serious public health risk, and whereas the MBTA has approved a plan to eliminate 90 contracted janitors resulting in hours cuts of up to 79% during peak travel times at some stations, and whereas contracted janitors who are among the lowest paid workers do not deserve to bear the brunt of cost-saving measures, and whereas the elimination of these jobs will cause tremendous hardship for these workers and their families and send shockwaves through the largely low-income minority communities in Boston and Greater Boston where they reside, and whereas the MBTA has recognized its obligation to provide an exceptionally clean and safe environment at all times for its patrons and employees, and whereas residents of Revere deserve a clean and safe public transportation system, and whereas Revere has an additional stake in MBTA contracting and budget decisions through its representation on the MBTA Advisory Board, now therefore be it resolved, Revere requests that the MBTA take all necessary steps to prevent these cuts and ensure a high standard of cleanliness at all MBTA stations. Calendar item number 14. This is a communication from Ms. Rachel Damiano of Revere, Massachusetts, requesting the abandonment of a certain portion of Italia Avenue, dated May 14, 2014, to the city clerk's office. In February of 2013, I purchased the property located at 56 Geneva Street. Directly abutting my property is a paper road, Italia Avenue. From what I can see, it appears that as though the piece of land that is Located directly next to my house is the only part of this paper road that is unused. The prior owners of this property have maintained this piece of land since 1965, and I have been maintaining it since February of 2013. I would like to be able to purchase this vacant lot so that I can landscape and fence it in for a yard and parking. My backyard is very small, and I have only one parking spot that is located to the left of my house. Thank you. Signed, Rachel Damiano of Revere, Massachusetts. Calendar item number 15. This is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Sikiati and Construction LLC of Swampscott, Massachusetts as a licensed drain layer dated May 13th, 2014. Dear council members, please be advised that in accordance with the provisions of Title 13, Chapter 13.08, Section 13.08.435, 
of the revised ordinances of the city of Revere is most recently amended. I hereby request that Sicchiati and construction of Swampscott, Massachusetts be appointed as a licensed drain layer. Please take careful notice that all drain layer licenses expire on April 1st annually unless sooner revoked by the mayor and the council. Mr. Marco Sicchiati has been advised that he will be contacted directly by the appointments committee with a date and time to appear before them concerning this appointment. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Calendar item number 16. This is a communication from the mayor relative to a loan order and resolution for CWSRF planning project number 3908, $1,200,000 for field investigations, illicit discharge detection and elimination, SES phase 6 investigations, and supplemental CWMP slash CSMP services. Dated May 15th, 2014, dear council members, I am writing to request a public hearing for one new loan order for borrowing under the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protections, Mass DEPs, calendar year 2014, CY-2014, Clean Water State Revolving Fund, CWSRF. The CWSRF was established to provide a low-cost funding mechanism to assist municipalities in complying with federal and state water quality requirements. In this round, the city is seeking to borrow funding for planning of the following project. CWSRF planning project number 3908, $1.2 million for field investigations, illicit discharge detection and elimination, SSES phase 6 investigations, and supplemental CWMP slash CSMP services. This CWSRF loan received... Initial approval for the Mass DEP's final CY 2014 CWSRF intended use plan. As was the case last year, in order to take advantage of these 2% low interest loans and potential principal forgiveness again this year, the city must complete two steps. First, approve a resolution expressly authorizing the mayor to file all applications and execute documents necessary for the loans, and second, approve loan orders for the balance of each project. In accordance with federal funding requirements, the CWSRF program includes an additional loan subsidy provided by MassDEP again this year. Additional subsidy is defined by Congress as principal forgiveness grants or negative interest loans. The City of Revere has been determined to qualify for additional subsidies under the environmental justice and green project categories based on applications prepared and submitted for the city by CDM Smith. The city council should recognize that these significant borrowings within the city's water and sewer enterprise fund will likely be a regular annual event during the course of the next decade. The planning work proposed with this new fund, as well as similar work necessary in future years, will be required commitments of the city's consent decree with the U.S. Department of Justice to remedy historic violations of the federal Clean Water Act, specifically the work proposed under the CY-2014 CWSRF funding will accomplish the following. The $1.2 million in planning funds will be utilized for two categories of work. One, to investigate and eliminate illicit discharge connections and to perform SES investigations in areas requiring additional study. And two, to provide supplemental CWMP slash CSMP services. I ask that the City Council approve the resolutions and move this loan order to a public hearing at its earliest opportunity. In advance of the public hearing, I will arrange for the City's consultant, CDM Smith, to provide the City Council with an update on the status of the previous and ongoing work completed within our sewer and stormwater systems to meet the demands of the EPA, the U.S. Department of Justice, and the consent decree. This background should assist the Council as it deliberates on this most recent funding request, very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Calendar item number 17. This is a communication from the Mayor relative to a loan order and resolution for CWSRF planning project number 3909, $700,000 for field investigations related to determination of illicit sewer connections and sump pumps, including required house-to-house inspections. Dated May 15th, 2014, the different parts of this communication than the previous ones are as follows. In this round, the city is seeking to borrow funding for planning of the following project, CWSRF planning project number 3909, $700,000 for field investigations, 
related to determination of illicit sewer connections and sump pumps, including required house-to-house -house inspections. This CRF loan received initial approval through the Mass DEP's final CY 2014 CWSRF intended use plan. Specifically, the work proposed under the CY 2014 CWSRF funding will accomplish the following. The $700,000 in planning funds will be utilized for two categories of work. One, to investigate and eliminate illicit connections to the sewer system in areas requiring additional study. And two, to continue implementation of the house-to-house -house inspection program for the purpose of identifying sump pumps for removal or redirection. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo. Mayor, calendar item number 18. This is a communication from the mayor relative to a loan order and resolution for CWSRF construction project number 3910. $15 million for construction of stormwater and wastewater collection systems capital improvements. The city is seeking to borrow funding for construction of the following project. CWSRF project number 3910, $15 million for construction of stormwater and wastewater collection systems capital improvements. The CWSRF loan received initial approval through the Mass DEP's final CY 2014 CWSRF intended plan use. The $15 million in construction funds will be utilized for five categories of work. One, to rehabilitate sewer pipelines and manholes to reduce infiltration slash inflow, II, into the water waste system. Two, to rehabilitate storm drains and or tide gates to improve flood control and or to reduce the amount of storm water entering the wastewater system. Three, to complete the capital improvements to storm water and wastewater pump stations throughout the city. Four, to remove illicit connections and sump pumps identified through the sump pump amnesty program or through house to house inspections. And five, to construct new sewer pipelines, manholes, and appurtenant structures. Very truly yours, Mayor Daniel Rizzo from the city of Revere. Calendar item number 19. Pursuant to Council Order 14-119, this is a motion presented by Councilor Janino that the Mayor request the Traffic Commission to examine the feasibility of designating Sherman Street as a restricted street for heavy commercial vehicles under Section 6 of Title 10 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Revere. Calendar item number 20. Pursuant to Council Order 14-120, this is a motion presented by Councilor Patch that the Mayor request the Department of Public Works Superintendent and Mr. Robert Button of CDM to appear before the Public Works Committee to address remediation of the drainage issues on Sherman Street, Orvis Street, and Carlson Avenue. Calendar item number 21. Pursuant to Council Order 14-121, this is a motion presented by Councilors Patch and Janino that the Mayor request the United States Postal Service to install a mailbox in the vicinity of Grover and Sigourney Streets. Calendar item number 22. Pursuant to Council Order 14-122, this is a motion presented by Councilor Patch that the Mayor request National Grid to repair the trench on Sigourney Street further the National Grid also be requested to redo the unacceptable repair job of the driveway base at number 14 Sigourney Street. These work orders have been made and requested of National Grid several times, but the repairs have yet to be made. Also note that this week a Ways and Means Committee meeting, chaired by Councilor Penta, has been scheduled for Thursday, May 22nd. On the committee are Councilors Brian Arrigo, Councilor Arthur F. Guanasso, Councilor Stephen Morabito, and Councilor Charles J. Patch, Sr. The committee will consider the following items. One, pursuant to Council Order 14-012, a motion relative to the City Council office supplies account. Two, pursuant to Council Order 14-033, the fraud, waste, and abuse policy. Three, pursuant to Council Order 14-057, the annual financial report for FY 2013. Four, pursuant to Council Order 14-058, Standard & Poor's Rating Services Upgrade Report. Five, pursuant to Council Order 14-068, 
the establishment of a human resources department. Six, pursuant to Council Order 14-108, the senior citizen work-off abatement for water and sewer bill reduction. And seven, pursuant to Council Order 14-119, renovations to City Hall dash free cash appropriation. And this has been before the Council. A reading of the Revere City Council agenda for the meeting of Monday, May 19th, 2014. I'm Rick Promise, and I'll see you at the Council.